Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, six Pinot Noirs, five vintages. I think it's five vintages. I'm not sure about the first one, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and quite a few different countries. So uh, let's just dig in. Uh, what, the reason I'm not sure about the first one, it doesn't hasn't got a, it doesn't I can't see a vintage on the label. Uh, it just says Pinot Noir Vignoble Rousselet, and uh, this is courtesy of Aldi. Let's give it a whirl. There's a slightly smoky um, strawberry jam character. Uh, there is a little bit of freshness of fruit, but it's more on that cooked fruit and certainly verging towards that sweet briary and bramble jam. Uh, and it feels as if someone's had a bonfire nearby that's giving it uh, a slight smoky overtone. It's okay. Yeah, not extremely classy, but um, a good, decent glug. I can't remember the, what the price is, but... Um, don't think it's going to be too expensive. There's, uh, um, it's a, just a d decent, juicy glass of uh, slightly jammy uh, red stroke black fruit flavours. A bit of berry, and uh, yeah, this smokiness. It's 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 okay. I would uh, probably have uh, a refill if someone offered me one. Uh, a bit of that, but uh, maybe if there were nothing else on offer. Second one, uh, we're in Chile with these two. Uh, so this one, it's Under Argus TH um, Pinot Noir from Leda 2011. Now the idea of uh, Under Argus TH range, it stands for Terroir Hunter, is that um, they have picked plots all through the winemaking bits of Chile, which stretch, I think, really like, over a thousand kilometres north to south, uh, which are particularly suitable for certain grapes. So, and I think they've got three um, places where they're doing Pinots. I think they do a Pinot from uh, Bio Bio. I think they do, well, they, obviously they do this later one. Do they do a Limery or a Casablanca one? I think they've got three. Anyway, um, but um, here I stick my ne nose in and it's more, um, not so much the terroir that's talking, there's a sulfury uh, character as if, as if uh, it's been bottled and um, it has just turned in on itself and gone slightly stinky, uh, developed those coffee-like aromas. Uh, I do get coffee in certain burgundies. I get a, a coffee in a lot of the, the wines from around uh, Corton, for example. But here, it feels like it's more winemaking related rather than terroir related. Let's taste it and see. And there's quite reasonable um, black cherry, uh, raspberry, a bit of um, plum in there. But... Uh, that sulfury thing is just giving this uh, medicinal overlay and um, I'm not sure whether it's the sort of wine that if I left open for a few days whether that would completely blow off. Um, I will, um, I'll might, might give that a go and, uh, and report back but for the moment it's uh, slightly difficult despite having some clearly some rather nice fruit in there. Let's see how we get on with the second Chilean one. Uh, so this is uh, Irasuri's Wild Ferment Pinot Noir, 2011 again, and this time we're in Casablanca. And blow me down if there's not more of the same there. Um, uh, yes, it's this um, toasty, sulfury coffee um, with the medicinal overtones. I don't think the fruit here is... The uh, fruit here feels, uh, underneath, feels like it, there's more on the berry side than the cherry side of the first one, but it's those... Um, yeah, those, those, those aromas that, uh, that seem to take over. Let's taste it and see whether they... Um, whether they manage to fight, the fruit manages to fight its way past the medicine. And I don't think it quite does, quite manages it. Um, keep my eye on, eye on those two, two and the report back, because um, I think that the uh, Underaga is potentially the finer wine, uh, but both of them uh, trouble me at the moment. Let's see whether I'm troubled by wine number four. Uh, we're in New Zealand now, and this is Asda's own label, Pinot Noir from Marlborough, 2010. I think it's made for them by Wither Hills. Well, this is uh, quite a, a, a nose full of, uh, of, of juicy, ripe red berry fruit. Um, maybe with a little bit of blackberries in, in there too, uh, and a touch of plum. Feels like it's going to be rounded, honest and simple, and none of the sulfury problems with the previous two. It smells, yeah, it smells like it's going to be okay and gluggable, not too complex, but hey. And that's just what it is, straight down the line, lots of flavour, um, and um, it, sometimes I find that there's a slightly stewed character coming through in, um, in some Marlborough Pinots, no problem with that here. It is uh, honest, juicy, friendly, plummy, berry glugger. I, uh, I, I really quite like that. I like that more than I expected I was going to. So, uh, mm, bully, for, bully for the bastard for getting that in there. Um, wine number five. Where are we with this one? This, oh, we're in Romania with this one. This is La Cantina, uh, Catina Vineyard, um, single vineyard Pinot Noir from Del Mare, 2009 vintage. 
Well, this is the palest in colour so far, uh, but I, I stick my nose in there, and there is this gentle, slightly perfumed, uh, slightly floral scented um, red berry, raspberries, um, touch of cranberry maybe. Uh, it smells like it, it's got a touch of earthiness in there as well. Um, it smells like it's not going to be hugely complex, but um, uh, maybe on that refreshing side. Let's try it. Well, I wouldn't say no to a large glass of that. Um, yes, it's, there's this, um, yeah, it's, simple's the wrong word. Light, gentle, um, raspberry, uh, wild strawberry, um, maybe a touch of, um, of plum in there. And with this earthy undercurrent, uh, the fruit, it's not too heavy, uh, there's a juiciness about it, and, um, and there's a freshness and zestiness about it. It really, I mean, it's the, uh, the oldest I've had so far, but it's still got, it's still got uh, uh, some youthful jollity about it. I really quite like that. Yeah, and there's a little bit of uh, smokiness coming in from some, from some oak. Um, fair enough, wine, I can't complain about that one. Let's see what I complain about the final wine, uh, which is uh, Marimar Torres, um, Don Miguel Vineyard, Cristina, Pinot Noir 2008. Let's give this a whirl. This is the deepest in colour. It's the um, oldest, and it also, from the smell of it, it, it feels like it's the uh, most, uh, it's the one that's verging on the overripe. I stick my nose in there, and it's got that slightly pruney, uh, raisiny character. Uh, on top of the, uh, and it's more dark berry flesh, blackberries, and uh, um, yeah, dark, dark plumminess. Um, it smells okay, but uh, it smells like it's maybe just that little bit too uh, rich and ripe. Let's try it. And I, it's, it's a bit pruney and top heavy. 14.5% alcohol. I think the highest of the others is 13.5. And okay, you shouldn't judge a wine by its alcohol level, but here it feels like um, they've picked the grapes far too late. Uh, the acidity has gone from them, uh, and uh, so yes, it's 2008 vintage. Maybe a 2010 of this uh, would be showing a little bit more perkiness, uh, but uh, here heaviness and um, the, it's those berries getting into the cooked berries um, and uh, yeah this pruny figgy character which is not a character I, I, I want in Pinot Noir. In other great varieties maybe but um, not Pinot Noir. So um, an interesting set of six wines. I've had uh, better sextets in my uh, uh, in my time. Uh, the one I'll probably be reaching for a glass full of first will I reckon it'll be the Aster one. Hey, see you soon.